Hey everybody, it's Master Gal Guys T here, bringing you my review for the latest episode of Supernatural First Blood. And I was really bored watching this episode. I thought that we'd come off and we'd have a stronger episode than this. This seemed more like filler with a little bit of setup going throughout. So where we left off, Sam and Dean had been arrested for attempting to kill the president, and nobody else knew what happened to them. So we kind of see that going on here as Mary and Cash try to figure out where Sam and Dean are while we're getting scenes of Sam and Dean acclimating to their prison situation for about two months, seeing them doing their, like, Sam and Dean stuff, Sam working out and all that, Dean taking a nail and scratching the days off on the wall and napping and liking the food, whereas Sam's like, ugh. So, we get some movement on that front when the guard comes in with the food one day and sees that they're both dead. So they get both taken in the morgue. It's like, hmm, okay, wondering what's kind of going on with that. And while this is happening, we see Mary and Cass kind of going through the motions. Cass talking to Crowley to see if he's got any information where his sources and spies aren't as high up so they don't know where they are. So, he... <laughs> I also liked how Crowley's like, well, all of the kind of, like, world-ending beings that they have come in contact with, I'm going to quote and say, I pity a fool that's messing with him. And it's like, there you go, Crowley. It's good on you for that. And... As they're just pretty much spinning wheels, kind of trying to do cases, as Cash tried to, like, suss out some vampires, but unable to do it, talking about how Sam and Dean would have already been there, figured it out, and wrapped it up at this point, kind of feeling dejected, and kind of seeing the work of Sam and Dean kind of working out in the world. And then, of course, seeing Mary going off to finish that up herself. And... Then we kind of get back to Sam and Dean. They wake up in the morgue and put the poor dude who's on duty to do stuff in the morgue into one of those body closets and bug out pretty much and are able to get in contact with Cass. And like, where are you? They kind of give them a general idea of where they're at, where they're going to pop up. And then they just go off in the woods. And it's kind of like the first blood Rambo kind of stuff because they eventually find a cabin and kind of set up woodsman style taking out people that's some good action but i mean there really wasn't much to it getting to these points and they kind of set up their traps and like pretty much take out everybody and they're like all right leave us alone we're getting out of here okay because there's this like agent and this old guy and they're not really given any character development for you to care about them going after the winchesters whatsoever so sam and dean get out and pretty much meet up with uh, Cass and Mary, because they had solicited the help of Mick and Mr. Ketch, and I don't know how they really helped other than getting to borrow a thermal satellite. Thermal imaging satellite. I mean, it was like something truly any hacker hunter could have done for them. To be honest, it was just a whole lot of really nothing happening in scenes, and just getting to that point, it's like, okay, this... An hour's almost up. Nothing's really happened. What is this supposed to kind of prove? So, as we're seeing them introduced, we had Mick throughout talking about doing his report on this typewriter, which was an interesting communication device in that he would kind of type in a command, be like, I'm reporting in, and then someone else would have another one, I would assume, and typing responses back to him. That was kind of cool. Not really much use other than to show that Mick's efforts to recruit hunters and whatnot didn't work so well. Which also begs into question, why didn't they just try and figure out what had happened to the Men of Letters before reestablish the American Men of Letters and do a symbiosis that way, which was going on? Because there was, an, there was kind of an antagonistic relationship between the Men of Letters and the hunters, but they were kind of getting in their own kind of groove, and it's just like, why... I mean, of course, you would always have trouble with Hunter because they work well because they're a loose network that can cover the United States and they kind of know the area as well. That's why you kind of have a problem of just giving orders and whatnot. It would be better to have a kind of 
symbolic and symbiotes, symbiosis effect and just set up lore centers and just be able to have a better communication network between hunters and everything. The mental letters would be their communication and research and R&D division, while well, hunters would work more on that. It's like, okay, that would be better, but that's not really thought of. They just want control over the hunters to be like, you follow our orders. And one hunter just like, yeah, you can stick that. Walks away. So we get to the end of the episode and we find out that Sam and Dean made a deal with Billy the Reaper that she would kill them and bring them back, but a Winchester has to die. And it's like, oh, okay, this is kind of telegraphed. Mary's going to sacrifice herself, but that doesn't happen. Cass kills Billy, which I don't have a problem with. Billy wasn't a bad character, but she wasn't developed in any real meaningful way. She was just a Reaper who was pissed off at the Winchesters, like, killing death and cheating death so many times. That's about it. We never got more dive into her, so it's like, okay, you knew you weren't doing much with her, so you just kind of tossed her. Because they made a pact that, a cosmic pact, so we'll have to wait out for those scenarios to happen, that somebody had to die, and she was coming to collect, and Cass is like, I'm not going to let you guys sacrifice yourself, because Mary was going to do it. And he's like, the world needs you, Winchesters. This sad little doom world needs you guys. And I'm not going to let you sacrifice yourself. And, of course, I did this thing, and you're welcome. And it was really, that was a big moment for Cass. I think realizing the importance of what Sam and Dean and the Winchester family have done with hunting and helping people and saving people and Seeing that kind of emotion with him is like, I'm not going to lose my friends. I'm not going to lose these people because they're my friends. And it was cool to see that in cast. Now, granted, he doesn't show his emotion that much when he's doing it. But after every season, we kind of see more and more of him come out. And we got a little bit more towards the end with the men of letters, seeing that Mr. Ketch had taken out the people that Sam and Dean had left alive, of course, which would probably piss him off. And, of course, Mick is talking to his superiors and saying I, he's making some progress because they saved the Winchester because they're like, hey, that'll be good PR with the Hunters. And has Mary kind of, Mary's ear to the proposition of working with the Men of Letters. So we'll kind of have to see what goes on with that, but not much was done to forward the plot. I'm thinking that this is trying to set up the conflict more of the British Men of Letters as the kind of back end villain of the season, the big bad, even though Lucifer himself and the Nephilim weren't touched on at all. I think it's going to be a kind of juggling act with that, which I don't know how much success that's going to bring. Because this episode was like, we got ourselves into a situation, how do we write ourselves out of this? And it just, I was very disappointed in it. And I was really bored with it. And I'm just hoping that we'll get better stuff as we're going on. And it was almost like I would have just rather had a filler episode. I'd like they had escaped in like five seconds or whatnot and just did like some random hunting or whatnot. It made me want one of those filler episodes that are really well done. And this was just like, ah, I know you could do so much better. Why? So I'm looking forward to see if it starts picking up and has a better kind of momentum and coherent back end story, but we'll have to see. So, those are my opinions on the episode. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Also, like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.